Okay, hi, and uh, welcome to Anazoic um, Wine Club. Uh, let me introduce you to um, a wine for the month of July. Um, and what we have here for you today is 2017 Dreisigacker Organic um, Riesling Trocken from Rheinhessen. Now, when you think of German Rieslings, you probably think of uh, Mosel and, and Rheingau, which are absolutely fantastic. But these are slightly different. So this is left bank of, of the River Rhine. Uh, further south um, from um, from Rheingau, but in terms of salt, it's very similar to to Burgundy. So there's a lot of diversity there as well uh, from styles. Um, this is um, a loss and loam and with a with a with a limestone um, bedrock. Um, so this is by a gentleman called Johann Dreisigacker, who um, took over from his father in 2006. Him and his brother um, split property in in kind of two, and as he was a um, student of a famous Klaus Peter Keller, he really changed the style of all the wines um, that he was, his father was making. So um, that really cost him a, a, a loss in a lot of business at the beginning. Uh, he lost almost 70% of his clients, and his father nearly took back the, that kind of property and production. Especially within a very short period of time, he gained all that back, but with completely different, new, modern um, crowd that were after more of um, um, modern Riesling, dry style of Riesling than traditional um, that was produced in uh, in Rheinhessen at the time, which was a lot, you know, that leap from a lot of residual sugar. Um, so yeah, he gained a massive um, respect around the world, especially in Michelin star restaurants. It was massive in, in, in Japan, with Japanese cuisine especially, uh, for his dry Rieslings and quite kind of concentrated in, in style. Um, he turned the property to organic viticulture and, and he uses uh, biodynamic practices as well. He loves green harvests, so seriously reducing yields, uh, uses wild ferments and uh, I loves that bit of texture um, with the, with the skin contact that, that, that he does. So this is 2017, which was very, very tricky vintage, uh, with some serious frost and a lot of hail, uh, which further reduced the yields in, in vineyards. Um, it was the shortest vintage, or the earliest kind of picking as well, because they had some serious heat during um, summer. So um, all those reduced grapes seriously concentrated and produced superb um, quality. Um, so it was obviously hand-picked, uh, very, very low yields, as I said, about 45 hectolitres per hectare, uh, which is tiny, think of even some of the Grand Cru um, Burgundies in, in, in a way. Um, he likes to, there was 18 hours maceration, 90% goes into stainless steel with the wild yeast ferments, and then 10% goes into um, large oak barrels. Um, let's taste it. I think straight on the nose, you know, you feel that, that you know, the, the, the smell, that concentration, it's good, it's quite riper style. Um, there's a lot of, obviously, that citrus character, um, you know, lemon and lime that you'll find. There's a tiny bit of kind of grapefruit as well. There's a lovely aromatics of the kind of queen's character as well coming through. A bit of white flowers. But beautiful, that um, stone fruit character, lovely white peach, a um, bit of apricot tea. And lovely, that whetstone um, minerality as well, quite pronounced as well. On the palate. It's dry, but beautiful acid, really lovely, fresh acidity, biting acid, the lemon and lime combination. Quince, green apple, and then it really opens up, it gives you that there's a lovely texture from, from that bit of skin contact and, and I think the oak, um, that 10% oak that, that, that it uses as well, gives a bit of weight to the wine as well. It's quite quite rich, quite pronounced. Again, packed with that, that riper characters of, 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 of the stone fruit. Beautiful acid just keeps on lingers and gives you that lovely minerally um, kind of steely finish at the end. Beautiful. I hope you'll enjoy it. Cheers.